Hi, my name is Jesse Anderson, and today I'd like to show you a little bit about how to import VMs. Now, VMs are commonly used in big data, especially with Hadoop and Spark and those sorts, because setting up and installing these technologies isn't as easy or straightforward as you'd like it. It's not just an installer, it's actually a bunch of things you have to configure, and it's not very user friendly. So what we often do is create these VMs so that people can use them. So I'm gonna show you a VM that I use. So here I am in VirtualBox. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to import an appliance. Then I'm going to browse where I have that appliance. So here I have a VM that I use to teach Hadoop with. So I go to that and here I have my, my VM. So what, what I need to do is look for that VM. So you may have received a VM as a as a 7-zip compressed, for example. What you would have done is you would have taken that 7-zip compressed file, decompressed it, and then you'll have these two files. Then when you go to import things, you'll want to look for this OVF file. So here we have our OVF file. Then we can click on continue. And now it's going to prompt us for several different things. We can change the name if we so desired, but more often than not, we want to change our CPU and RAM. And this is a very important thing. The person who creates, in this case me, creates these VM needs to be pretty pessimistic about people's capabilities in terms of running these VMs. I can't assume that you have a laptop that's a high powered thing. So what I have to do is I have to be pretty pessimistic and say you only have two CPUs and you only have 1024 or one gigabyte of RAM. What you really want to do there is change that number of CPUs to either four or depending on what kind of laptop you have or desktop you have, eight CPUs. Reason behind that as, as things are run, uh, especially on the laptop, on the VM, what you're going to do is you're going to see some slowdowns there of it's running a bunch of things, but it's only running on one CPU. So we really want to kick up the number of CPUs. Here's where it gets even more important in terms of running this, and that's on RAM. So I had to be really pessimistic about the amount of RAM here and put it at one gig. But you should really kick this up is that you're going to get some significant amount of performance power there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start up activity monitor and this will vary depending on what you have as far as your operating system. But I'm going to look at my memory and I'm going to see that I have a decent amount of free memory. Here you can see that I have at least four gigabytes of free memory. So I have 16 gigs of physical memory. I'm using about 12. That leaves me with about four gigs free. What you'll want to do is something similar. On Windows, you have Task Manager. Here on Mac, you have Activity Monitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this RAM and I'm going to change it to 4096. And make sure that you hit Enter. There's a weird thing on VirtualBox because they're not, if you just hit import, it won't have accepted that. You actually have to hit enter there. Then we're going to click on import. And as you can see, it's going to start importing that. And what it's doing there is it's making a copy of that VM. It's going to place that VM so that you can start it up and start working with it. Now, one common issue that people have is what's called VTX. In order to run a virtual machine, what you often need to have is VTX turned on. For Macs, it is turned on by default. However, often for PCs, it's turned off by default. What you have to do is you'll have to go into your BIOS and actually have to reset your machine, go into your BIOS, turn on VTX or whatever it's called within that BIOS for virtualization. Sometimes that's two settings in your BIOS, sometimes it's just one. And what you'll get is if you don't have that turned on, there'll be a message that comes up and says something about running in 64-bit mode. Sometimes it'll say something like VTX not enabled. So what you'll wanna do is, if you get that message, consult your laptop or desktop um, machine and the owner's manual for that to see what you need to enable to have VTX turned on. And specifically, that's something in the BIOS that you'll have to go in and change.
So as you can see on, on my machine, it's not really taking three minutes in order to import this. It's actually relatively fast. So we just have a few more seconds remaining and now I have a VM. As you can see, it popped in right here and I can double click on that VM to start running it. From here, you can start running any class files or running whatever you have with Hadoop.